The Lord is the way it used to be for your presence and change. Lift up your voices and worship God. Let God hear you worshiping Him this morning. To the way it used to be before your presence came. Hallelujah. You see, there is something the presence of God does to a man. He does not just empower you to speak in tongues alone. He changes you. So if, if the Bible says you have been called out of every tribe, it's because the presence of the Lord has changed us. And we will not go back to what we used to be before he changed us. For your presence and change. Hallelujah. Before we sit, let's see this scripture. Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. Verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. Verse 2. Many of us are waiting for the projection. Please pick up your Bibles. Whether it is on your phone or the hard copy, pick it up. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. Hallelujah. I'll be reading from the NIV. It says, As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. Hallelujah. Please project the KJV. King James Version, please. And the Spirit entered me, entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. I just received this scripture now. Can we speak to the Lord this morning? Let your word enter me. The entrance of the word of God gives light and understanding to the simple. Some of us came to church this morning because we feel like coming to church but the presence of God wants to impact you Lord let your word enter me this morning in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen Let's be seated in God's presence. If you love the Lord, I want you to put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Somebody say, Glory! Are there joyful people in the house this morning? Somebody shout, Glory! You are the Holy One, Yahweh, the King of Zion. You are the Hallowed One, You are the Holy One, Yahweh. The King of Zion. It says, generations after generations keep praising you, yet no one sons you are. Then I ask the Lord. What name fits you? And he said what? And he said, yeah. Yeah, the hallowed one. Yeah, the holy one. 
there is somebody here he wants to make his presence known to you and he said he wants to make his presence known to you I don't know who that person is but I want to encourage everyone to open up their hearts this morning we have come unto Mount Zion the city of the living God a place of innumerable company of angels and to the blood of sprinkling, to Jesus the mediator. And to the blood of sprinkling, that what speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Yahweh, the King of Zion. Hallelujah. I am excited this morning. You don't understand. It's our realm. Joy is our realm. Hallelujah. Glory! I welcome everyone to church this morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to church. Put a smile on your face. Please, put a smile on your face. Hallelujah. God is for us. I celebrate the Lord for the grace given to me to bring his word to his people. I count not myself as one who has attained but I am what I am by the grace of God hallelujah I also celebrate the grace of God in the lives of uh, Seth's man I love to call him Daddy Gio and Mommy Gio hallelujah let's celebrate God in their lives they are wonderful parents Daddy God bless you sir Mommy God bless you ma thank you so much for this opportunity uh, I also celebrate everybody seated here. All our fathers in the house, our pastors, our ministers, the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. This morning, we'll trust God to do a quick one. We'll be looking at the topic, the presence of God. The presence of God. We'll be reading some scriptures. I love scriptures. So get ready, we'll be reading lots of them. Hallelujah. Psalms 91. Psalms 91, the first scripture we'll be reading this morning is Psalms 91. We'll read verses 1 to 16. We are reading the whole verses in Psalms 91. Hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, you can read with me, please. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Next verse. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Next verse. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. Next verse. Hallelujah. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Next verse. Because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, my habitation. Higher. There shall no evil before me. Neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. Amen. Amen. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. Next verse. They shall bear me up in their hands lest I dash my foot against the stone. Next verse. I shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall I trample on their feet. Next verse. Because he has set his love upon me that is you have set your love upon the lord therefore will he deliver him 
He was, I will set him on high because he had known my name. Hallelujah. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. The last verse. Let's echo it together. One, two, go. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalms 23 verses 1 to 6. The presence of God is the message. Psalms 23 verses 1 to 6. Let's read together. One, two, go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Next verse. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Everybody say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell. Hallelujah. There are dimensions of God you cannot understand until you experience him in the secret place. The secret place of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. You see this abiding presence we are talking about? It is the secret place of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are things that only my husband knows about me. Hallelujah. When I stand here, you know, I was sharing with my husband one day, I said to some people, I am pastor, Abby. To some, to my father, I'm a daughter, Abby. Why some people call me mama or pastor? My father will call me by my name. Amen? Amen? My husband will call me wife. I am only a wife to him. And there are things I do for him that no other person can do. Amen? You not answering me. I'm giving us an example. He has experienced a part of me that nobody has experienced. Please bring your mind here. Bring your mind here. Bring your mind here. Hallelujah. Now, when I stand here and I'm teaching the word of God, what people see is, of course, the, the face of Christ, Abby. We are seeing the pastor teaching the word. And to my baby, I am what? Mother. Hallelujah. There are different dimensions of God. And there's a fatherhood dimension of God. That only people that have gone into the secret place can understand. You don't understand. You know, we call God Jireh, Abim, the God that provides uh, where, where there is nothing. We call him Elohim. He creates something out of nothing. We call him Rafa, the one that heals us when we are sick. We call him Nisi, our banner, Abi. <laughs> and we call him Elion, the God most high. But when Jesus wanted to address him, when he wanted to teach his disciples how to pray, what did he say? Our Father, who art in heaven, Jesus had experienced something about God in the secret place. There is something you will know about God that will make you call him Father. And that thing you will know, you can only know it in the secret place. For he that dwelleth, to dwell means to live, to rest. To find rest. He that finds rest in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God is not committed to protecting a man that has not found a space in the secret place. Hallelujah. Psalms 23. He says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, this is how the presence of God works. You know, there are some things. You are not, knowledge is good. When we say experience is the best teacher, experience is not the best teacher, but experience is good. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? If you don't agree, wave your hand. Okay, we are on the same page. Somebody shout hallelujah. Okay. Experience is not the best teacher, but experience is good. And experience is necessary. 
Why is it necessary? There are some things you cannot boldly say about God if you have not experienced him in the secret place. Hallelujah. When God was going to commission Moses to go and bring the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, God first revealed himself to him. Moses saw the burning bush. The bush was not consumed, but it was burning. And he said, I will turn around now to go and see why it is not burning. And then he heard the voice of God. Do not come close for where you stand. Take off your shoes. For where you stand is where? A holy ground. Amen. Amen. And God spoke to him and told him how that he wanted him to go to the land of Egypt to bring the people out of Egypt. And Moses asked a question. What was that question? Who will I tell them that sent me? And what was God's response? I am. He said, tell them I am. There is a name that you can call God when you experience him in the secret place. Every other person can say he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the I am that I am. The this and the that. The Arugu Ojo. But when you enter secret place, he becomes the God of Frida. It is no longer the God of Abraham or the God of Isaac. Abraham saw something about God. Hallelujah. There was a dimension of God that was, that was revealed to Abraham. There was a dimension of God that was revealed to Isaac. Okay, thank you. There was a dimension of God that was revealed to Jacob in Psalm 24. He says, this is the generation that will seek your face. Oh God of Jacob. How did Jacob seek God? We can see that in Genesis 32. The, the, the scripture says, and, 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 and Jacob was left alone. And he wrestled with a man until the day broke. That is how to seek the Lord. And then these people, they became God of Abraham. They're saying God of Isaac, God of Jacob. And one day, your generation too wants to ask you, who is your God? Hallelujah. My father is a pastor. And he said something one day, he was ministering. I will never forget. He said, he's not doing any other work apart from serving God. And he picked up his Bible. And said, if God does not show up in his life, his children will look at him and look at the Bible and say, it is this book our father carried and it did not amount to anything. Abby, but when, when God showed up, we can both say, I want to serve the God of my father. Why do we call the God of Abraham? We say, Abraham's blessings are mine. The God of Abraham. Abraham experienced God. In the secret place. The Bible speaking of Isaac. He said Isaac sowed in the land that same year. And he what? He reaped a hundredfold. That is a dimension. But when Jacob wanted to seek God. It was different. Psalm 24 did not say. This is the generation that will seek the face of, uh, of the God of Abraham. He said the God of Jacob. Jacob experienced God in the secret place. Hallelujah. And then his name changed. His name changed. The choir said, I won't go back. Abby, I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. After the, 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 the name of Jacob was changed to Israel, he did not go back to being the supplanter, the deceiver. He became a pattern. So much that the Bible says, if you want to know how to seek God, go and study Jacob. And for you, your generation is coming. You say you love God. You love church. Who is your God? Then you will not be, you'll be, saying, you'll not be saying he's the God of Abraham. You will be bold to say he's the God of Frida. For those of you looking at me and being surprised, my name is Frida. So I have experienced God. I can say he's the God of Frida. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when my baby is sleeping, she sleeps with confidence. Why does she sleep with confidence? Because she knows that mommy is around. Or even if mommy is not close, if I cry once, this woman will run. She will leave everything. Those that have experienced God in the secret place, that's how God runs for them. Oh. You don't know. <laughs> that's how God runs for them. She was sleeping one day and I just stood beside her court. And I was looking at her. She was so beautiful. And the Holy Spirit said to me, this is how God watches over you. When we say, he that watches over Israel does not sleep, nor slumber. Imagine you are sleeping and slumbering and God is watching. Look at this creation of mine. And God is marveled. Or you don't think God believes in you. As much as you believe in God, he believes in you too. Yes. 
Sometimes God believes in you more than you believe in yourself. So my baby cries. And when I am not attending to her immediately, what will she do? She will intensify it. She will keep crying until I show up. Anybody can carry that baby. Abby, you can play with her. But a time will come, there's something only me can give her that you can't give. Eh? There is something only me can give my baby. And no matter how much she loves to play with you, when the time comes, you will bring her and say, take your baby. You don't understand. You, you, you will try every... That is how God created it all. God created it that no matter what you do, that space for him, nothing will fill it. If you like, take all the drugs in the world. If you like, have all the boyfriends and girlfriends. If you like, use all the iPhones. If you like, visit all the country. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma. That space for God, nothing will fill it. Nothing. 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 When I gave birth to that child, God opened me up to another dimension of himself. If, if she doesn't sleep, I cannot sleep. If she doesn't, if, if she is not comfortable, I cannot be comfortable. Our pain is my pain. Our concern is my concern. That is how God treats you when you dwell in the secret place. I said we are going to read scriptures. <laughs> are we following this morning? God is a father and it takes a revelation that comes from the secret place to know him as a father. Apostle Paul was speaking in the book of Romans chapter 8. He said we have received the spirit of what? Adoption of sonship whereby we cry what? Abba! People, uh, uh, some people say Abba is a Greek word. Abi. That means daddy. You can call everybody. Uh, you can say this is my father in the Lord. Abi. <laughs> some people will call my father father in the Lord but when I want to go to the dimension of Abba there's something my father can give me that I cannot give an outsider hello my father can say ah, this is my daughter this is my son but there is something when, when God looks at you there is something your clothes cannot give you there is something your friends cannot give you only God can and you get it when you abide. When you abide. The kind of prayer points you pray reveals whether you are a resident of the secret place. The kind of prayer you pray eh, is a reflection of where you dwell. For they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I love David. He said they shall abide. And they will say of the Lord, he is what? My refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Who do you trust? What are the kinds of prayer you pray? It is a reflection. When you are praying prayers of fear, some people think they, they are praying some faith-filled prayer. They don't know it's prayer of fear. There are some prayers that stem out of fear. Hey, hello, hey. They say somebody just had accident and you are praying panic prayer. You are saying, ah, I will not have accident. I will not. It, it is fear. When you abide, when you know you are. What the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 2. It says we are what? Seated. Do you know what it means to sit? Psalms 2. It says, he that sits in heaven shall do what? Shall laugh. Why do the heathens rage? Give us that scripture. Psalms 2. Psalms 2. Okay, no. Start from verse 1. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? Next verse. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Verse 4. He who sits in the heavens shall do what? Shall laugh. When you laugh, you know, this tells us that when God is about to judge the enemy, the first thing he does is to laugh. 
confidence. God looks at them and says, wow. The same way Jesus shook them in hell. The scripture in, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, 15. He says, and he made an open show. He shook them. <laughs> Higher. He said, the Lord shall hold them in the region. He will scorn them. The presence of God. You want to command power and speak with authority? First sit in the secret place. A lot of us want to come out. We want to be seen. But then it must begin. I was sharing with one of my sisters. I said when I was in the university, by the grace of God, I started studying scriptures, praying, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Pray for the sick and they will be well. Pray for people with missing script and the results will come out. It's not, it is not a joke. Brought a dead baby back to life in my hostel. But in my fellowship, I was, a, I was an ESCO. But do you know, till I graduated from that school, they did not ask me to preach one day. Do you know the nickname they gave me? Walking Bible. They would call me because they, they knew, I, I knew I knew scriptures. I still know them. Hallelujah. And this time I'm living there. I'm enjoying them. Glory. They will call me Walking Bible. I wrote application. I want to join Sunday school team. So that I'll be teaching Sunday school and Bible study. They rejected me. They wanted to make us leaders again. And even when the old fellowship came together and said, Sister Frida should be the general secretary. They made me assistant general secretary. And when I went back to God and said, I don't understand. These people that are even teaching, some of them do not understand what they are saying. And God said, then you that understand, go and teach. They rejected me. And they said openly, we cannot allow you to teach, go. And God taught me a lesson. He said, you will study as if you are building castle for yourself. You are not studying to come and preach. No. The moment you begin to read your Bible, because oh, one day they can tell me I should come and preach, you have started failing, no? Eh? Scripture says in the book of Isaiah, when the enemy shall come against us, like a mighty rushing wind, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard. The Spirit of the Lord within you that you have built from the Scripture, you have stirred up with the Word of God, is what will raise that standard. You are not a Christian, you are not a believer, because you want to preach first. There were scriptures. I, God made me study scriptures. Eh? I studied and studied and studied to a point. Sometimes I will say scriptures, I will not even know where they are. It was later I started saying, Oh, this thing that I used to say is in the book of Psalms, his book of Joshua, his book of this. Secret place. It is in the secret place God will purge your motive. When you say you love God, you love God. Enter the secret place and you will know whether you love God. God, oh. Eh, I'm passionate about the things of God. I love the Lord. I want to do well for the Lord. And God is screening your heart in the secret place. And that is why we tell you, this person that offended you, you have not forgiven the person. And you say, no, what's it done? What's it done? I, <laughs> pardon me for... You say, it has left my heart. I have, forg I have forgotten it. No, I'm not angry. But when you enter the secret place, God will tell you, you are angry. Can you fight with the Holy Spirit? If Holy Spirit tells you, you are angry, will you say you are not angry? <laughs> the secret place is where your weakness is fed before God. Some people say, ah, I'm struggling with masturbation. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. You have not entered the secret place, man. You have not. I'm still struggling with my list. All these little, little, little forces that, that spoils the vine. You have not entered this. Do you... Do you do you understand what the, the weight that the presence of God carries? When you enter, all those baggage, those things you are calling weaknesses. I talk too much. I, I, I get angry too much. I lie. I do this. I do that. I'm jealous. I'm, it will melt in the secret place. We have not encountered God in the secret place. That's why we are not bold in our generation. We say our fathers... We, we talk of powers of old. Those were men that went to seek God in the order of Jacob. I will not let you go until you show me something, until you give me something. Many of us are half baked today.
You have not started. Some people have not, even, they don't even want to enter at all. They just want to live a normal. You, God did not create you. God did not bring you to this world to live a normal Christian life. No. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Acts 10 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing what? Doing good, healing them that were oppressed. For God was with him. When you tabernacle in the presence of God, you can now boldly say, Emmanuel, God is with me. When I was going to have my baby in January, I was, I was beginning to, you know, I, I, I was beginning to get scared. Somehow, something inside of me was feeling scared. Like, okay, how is it going to be? It's my first time. Okay, will, will I be speaking in tongues? Or will I be shouting my daddy? Will I be calling my husband? You know, I was just having many thoughts. And then the word of the Lord came to me. You see, when we got that thing for January, Emmanuel, God said, that is me telling you. When you pass through the fire, when you walk through water, I will be with you. You will go there and you will come out. It doesn't matter what will happen. It is when you enter the secret place. You will hear God talk to you. The Bible says, God spoke to Moses. And said, man will speak to his friend. They had koinonia. Intimacy. Partnership. You don't become friends with people just because you shake hands with them in the first day. You become friends when you spend time with each other. The presence of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. What happens in the secret place? Quickly. What are the things that happen in the secret place? Number one. The secret place is a place of calmness and stillness. Psalms 46 verse 10. Psalms 46 verse 10 he says be still and know that I am God I will be exalted among the nations I will be exalted in the earth praise the Lord some people don't know that God is God yes when we enter the secret place and we are still we are calm the secret place is not a place you begin to talk to God some people when they enter the, their place of prayer it's like they are preaching to God it's like they're they are, they are, they are, they are, they are having quarrel with God. And God, you know, I did not, I did not take microchip to the exam hall. I saw Bode using microchip. So because I did not use, if I fail, God is on you, you are threatening God. You are not a serious person. Ah, God, people are doing anyhow in my office. I did not do anyhow. No. That is your default setting. When you, when, you, when you are a resident in the, in the secret place, you are not permitted to do any harm. So you don't bully God in the place of prayer and say, because I did not do any harm, you must do this for me. No, sir. Be still. And know there's a knowledge that comes when you are still. You cannot be everywhere jumping, moving. And you expect God to speak to you. You will be still in the presence of God. When you appear before the Lord in the secret place, the first thing that happens to you is stillness. The secret place is not a place you talk too much. It's a place you listen more than you speak. Yes, you listen. You listen. And when it is time for you to talk, you will know. We are getting there. The secret place... Okay, the place of prayer is where you speak and talk all you want. Yes, when you are praying, you can pour out your heart to God... Tell the Lord what you want. But when you enter the secret place, the secret place is where you open up your heart to receive from the Lord. Everybody can claim to know something about God. But there is something you will know, sir, when you enter the secret place. It will give... Ezekiel, in, in, in that book of Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 that we read, he said and the spirit entered me and set me on my feet there is something you can know about God when you enter the secret place 
and you will hold on to it and use it to run. Write the vision down. Abby, make it plain on tablets that he may run that reads it. Another thing that happens in the secret place is waiting. You wait. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 and 31. Isaiah 40, 30 and 31. Quickly, media. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You wait. This is what is most difficult for some, for some believers in, in our day. We don't want to wait. We want it quick. God of speed. God can give you speed. But that is after you have followed due process. The speed is to cover up for the, for the days of delay. God will not rush you. In the secret place, you will, if you fail, you know, in, in, um, in schools, primary and secondary schools, if you do well in, the, in a class, you say, ah, you have, ah, this child is very brilliant, double promotion. I'll be from primary four, they'll take the child to primary six. In the school of the spirit, there's no double promotion, sir. And if you fail a class, you will repeat it. In the school of the spirit, you will go from stage to stage. The Bible says line by line. Precept by precept, a little here, a little there. Hallelujah. It is in the secret place that we receive the training on how to wait. David was anointed king at age 17, but he did not become king until he was 30. Go and read the book of 1 Samuel. He did not become king until he was age 30. And that period, what was he doing? He was waiting. He was what? Waiting. If, if, if some people here were David, as soon as Samuel anointed him, they would go and form gang with their friends and say, Oh, my, that king saw your sin. God has rejected him. Prophet Samuel came to our house and anointed me. You better align with me now so I can give you Basharu or Balogun, Abi, or I'll make you Otsu, Otsu Oba, or Osi, or Yalode, Abi. Yeah, we go about saying it. I am the new king, go. Oh, if you misbehave, better come and partner with me. But David went back to the secret place to do what? To wait. There's something called appointed time. And it is not you that will tell yourself that this is my appointed time. No, it is the approval you get from the secret place that determines when your appointed time is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, the word, became flesh and he came to dwell among men that he would die and resurrect. Jesus, at age 12, was in the temple. Although he was the word, he, he was God and he still is God. But you did not find Jesus teaching the elders. What was he doing? He was calm, asking questions as if he did not know. He knew. Scripture says Jesus himself knew what to do. So he was not, he was not ignorant. He was just what? Waiting. When others are running and doing what is in vogue, you are waiting in the presence of God until he gives you a word. It is what God gives you in the secret place that can defend you in the open. Yes. Some people are just rushing out, coming out to, to make bold claims. Black, see, it is not by what you say with your mouth, though. It is not. The, the, the man of God that led the prayer for the nation, he was saying these people understand altars. They have secret place. When some people go to native doctors, the native doctor might not come out for one hour, two hours, and they will sit down there waiting. Abby, is it not true? We see it in movies. They will sit down there waiting, but when people come to church, they'll be checking time. They'll be the, we are so impatient when we're when we in the secret place. Even during morning devotion, some people will be speaking in tongues. They'll be looking for toothpaste. They'll just open their Bible. Okay. Psalm 16. Okay, thank you, Jesus. They'll be looking for clothes, looking for water to take their and they just go out like that. And when they come back, it's still the following morning. And you want to represent God in your generation. 
Some people are saying, eh, our fathers of faith, they have flaws. They did this. They did that. They are not this. They are not that. But those men saw God. You, you have not even started your journey. And you are saying what is not. Go back to the secret. Everything you are looking for, you can get it in the secret place. Yes. God said, I will give you the treasures of darkness. He didn't treasures. You will enter the secret place. And it will make you. Time is not on our side. It is in the secret place that you become commissioned to carry God's message. God cannot trust you until he has tried you. By try there, I mean, you know, when God wants to be refined, we call it try. Abby, we put it through fire. And then it comes out glittering. God will first, will first prune you. Try your motive. It was the psalmist that said, search my heart. He knew the presence, the importance of the presence of God, Psalm 51. And he said, do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your spirit from me. Jesus, John chapter 15. For without me, ye can do what? Nothing. Abide in me and I in you. That is where you bear fruit. You want to represent God. I know you can pray. I know you have prayer stamina, but are you in the secret place? Do you, that you are praying is, is not a guarantee that you are in the secret place. So, yes, that you study. You must, you, you must create that portal. You must be consistent until the Lord tabernacles with you. Moses said, I will not go from here if your presence does not go with me. And God said, okay, my presence will go with you. Exodus 33. Let us see the scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. It is in the secret place that you become commissioned to carry God's message. Isaiah 6, 8 to 10. Oh, Rasapai. Okay, and I heard the voice of God, of the Lord, saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. If we read from beginning, Isaiah chapter 1, chapter 6, sorry, verse 1, he says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, I did what? I saw the Lord. When Isaiah entered the secret place, he saw the beauty of the presence of God. And please give me the verse that I said, Woe is me. For I am an undone man, and I live in the midst of people with unclean lips. Verse 5, thank you. So I said, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. Imagine from chapter 1 to chapter 5, as I have been prophesying, you know. But... In, in, in chapter 6, he said, I saw the Lord. So before, all, where was those prophecies coming from? Yeah. And scripture, take us to verse 6. Yes, then one of the, the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a life coal, which are taken from the tongues of the altar. Next verse says, he touched, he placed that coal on his tongue. And he said, What? Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin pushed. This is what happens in the presence of God. If Isaiah had not entered this place, I tell you, he would have been wasting his time. When the presence of God becomes, when God becomes a priority to you, you don't need to be reminded that you have to dwell in his presence. It, you, you will be eager. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go. Ah. Hallelujah. Another thing that happens in the presence of God is transformation. I'll make it quick. Transformation. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 6. We have, we have seen that. Genuine transformation happens when we enter God's presence. The presence of God is light. God does not dwell in time. God's realm is light. Yes, light. So and when you come into the presence of God, the secret place of the Most High, He transforms you. Another thing that happens in the presence of God is Restoration. We can see that in Psalms chapter 23, verse 3. 
In this kingdom, restoration is possible, but only in the secret place, in the presence of God. And I will restore Joel chapter, what is that? 2, 25, am I correct? Okay, restores my soul, yes, restoration. Please take us to Joel chapter 2. I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. Hallelujah. God can only restore and lead you when you are in his presence. 25. God can only restore and lead you when you are in his presence. Yes. So I will restore to you the years that the Swami Locust has eaten and all of that. Now, this is only possible when you encounter the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God cannot lead a man that is not in his presence. When you avoid the presence of God, it is a sign that you can take care of yourself. Yes. It means you can handle yourself. So God cannot lead people who can lead themselves. So one of the ways you prove to God that he is sovereign over your life is when you enter into the secret place and dwell there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you are in God's presence, you must give him attention. Attention that is uninterrupted. Don't rush out of his presence when he's not done with you. Don't be too quick to come out. Bread that is not properly baked. When you, when you cut it and you want to, will you be able to eat that bread? No, no. When you boil beans and the beans is not done, very strong, can you eat it? You spit it out be able to eat it so don't come out half baked let God finish his work don't be so quick to represent God if you have not encountered him in the secret place what gave Moses boldness before Pharaoh was the encounter he had our time is up hallelujah so this is a month of open doors and one thing that can lead you effortlessly through your open doors is when you dwell in the presence of God. Hallelujah. The secret place is called secrets because God is a God of secrets. If you are the kind of person that, that you talk too much or you, 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 you are here and there every time, please allow the Holy Spirit, allow the presence of God to prune you. God keeps secrets. The Bible says the secret things belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you enter the secret place, it means everything you see, everything you experience is not for public ears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning we want to pray. So every time you pray, you go before God in prayer. You go with the consciousness. That's what? I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I say of the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. You don't pray panic stricken prayers. Higher. Let's rise to our feet. Are we blessed this morning? It's time to pray. I know our time is fast spent, but we will pray this morning. And we want to see a scripture. Genesis 32. Genesis 32. Give us verse 24. Genesis 32, 24. Okay. Then Jacob was left alone. Somebody said Jacob was left alone. Everybody said Jacob was left alone. Please, if you are sitting, rise to your feet. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. And after the whole experience, verse 30, give us verse 30. 32, 30. 32, 30, media, quickly, please. 32, 30. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved. When you enter the secret place, 
God gives you a name. Lift up your voice to God this morning. And say, Father, I choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. In the presence of God. I choose to dwell. Take me to that secret place where you are. And let me dwell there. I choose to dwell in the secret place. I choose the world is too fierce. I choose to dwell in you will need the presence of God to go far. There are corrupt people everywhere. You will need the presence of God to make the difference in your world. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Hallelujah. Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Second Corinthians 3 17. Quickly it says, And the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, another version says, Where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom, there is deliverance. Lift up your voice and say, Father, Father let your presence let bring your freedom. Presence. Let your presence in my life, let your in my family, bring freedom, bring freedom, deliverance, in Jesus, liberty, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let your presence compel freedom, in the name of Jesus, oh, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, amen. I'm so sorry for taking our time. I'm so sorry. Please, we'll read one more scripture and then we'll do something very powerful this morning. Psalms chapter 67, verse 5. Okay, verse 6. We'll read verses 5 and 6 very quickly. It's a month of open door. Psalm 67, verse 5. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Verse 6. Let somebody scream it. Then shall the earth shall yield an increase. increase. God, our, our God, God, shall bless, bless us. us. The next verse says, God will bless us and all the ends of the earth will fear him. He says, but let the people praise him first, Abby. And then the earth will yield this increase. When we praise God, the doors will open. Are we ready to dance? There's no song. Just begin to dance. Dance unto the Lord. Nobody singing any song. Just choose a song in your heart and dance. As you praise God, you confuse the enemy. Yes, we have prayed and we will praise. Dance and glorify the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Choose a song and dance. God is worthy. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory.